Hello everyone, welcome to the Geo Ecologist. I am Dr. Krishnanand and you have been watching my videos on various topics of geography, environment and research methodology on my channel, the Geo Ecologist. So if you are new to this channel, please subscribe to our channel and also for the earlier videos, you can go to the playlist section. Now in today's session on world regional geography, we are going to cover the South American region or the South American realm. But before we go ahead, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and also please share the videos with others as well. So now let's learn about the South American realm. Now when we say South American realm, the continent of South America comes to the picture and which has all these particular names that we should see here. So right from the north, Venezuela, Colombia, Ecuador, Peru, Chile, Argentina, Uruguay, Paraguay, Bolivia, Brazil, Guyana, Suriname and then you have French Guiana and some islands as well like Galapagos Island and then you have Falkland Islands. These are the constituents of South American realm which we are going to learn in details. So basic information if you observe is that 12 degree north to 55 degree south latitudes is the extent. It means a very important point here that if this is 12 degree north and this is almost 55 degrees south it means what it means that this country covers equatorial region as well as tropical region and also subtropical region so it has a lot of variations in terms of the climatology and related aspects now next important thing is that south america is the fourth largest continent after Asia, Africa, North America and if you observe carefully this particular longitude, the 60 degree bisects this into east and west divides it into the two halves. Now let's understand furthermore in details about this particular realm. So the first thing that we always talk about is the geological history, the formation of this particular continent. So if you observe a lot of highlands and basins are there in this particular realm and the geological history can be summarized in development through geological time scales. So if you observe carefully, the first stage encompasses the Pre-Cambrian time when the earth was formed 4.6 billion years ago till 540 million years ago and most of this continental formation of South America happened or started to form during that particular time. So we say the process of amalgamations and also the cratonization. Then further development took place that is in the second phase. So if you observe in the second phase Paleozoic era between 541 to 252 million years ago. So this is the time period when you observe after the cretinization, the material further accreted that is gathered and supercontinent Gondwana, we say Gondwana land and then of even larger Pangaea portion was formed which constituted this particular continent South America. Then if you observe in the third stage that is the present continental structure that emerged right from the Mesozoic to Cenozoic eras. So Pangaea breakup, Gondwana separation and then you had the Andean formation, the formation of Andes mountains and the formation of the adjoining Atlantic Ocean as well. So this is the time when the present structure if you observe is formed. So this side it's Pacific and this side it's Atlantic. So in between the two lies this particular continental realm. Now if you observe carefully about the physiographic features of South America, so two important lines as you see equator passes through this particular point and Tropic of Capricorn passes here. So this is particularly the zone we say is completely tropical zone, the tropics. And we know that Amazon basin, Amazon rainforests, the lungs of the planet are in this particular zone itself. What else you find from north to south? In the north you have Caribbean Sea, right? Then Galapagos Island, Colombia. These, and these are the longest mountain chains that you observe and alongside many deserts, Atacama, Patagonia deserts and several other deserts that we'll be talking about. And also you have the Brazilian highlands and also the Brazilian shield out here. 
So if you observe, South America can be divided into three major physical zones or regions if you observe. Mountains and highlands, which is clearly visible. Then river basins like this, majorly Amazon and its relative like Orinoco and other basins. And then coastal plain areas. So because of the long coastline, if you observe, the coastal plain areas are also the major parts of this particular realm. So Galpagos Island, if you observe, part of Ecuador, if you see, it is a collection of so many islands of which Isabella is the biggest one. Then you have Fernandina, Santiago, Santa Cruz, San Cristobal and several others. And this is connected from Ecuador. So if you want to travel, you have to go to Ecuador or Peru from where you can travel. And why are these islands famous? Also for biodiversity. Remember this marine iguana, this particular creature which is essentially found on this particular island itself, right? Now, if you observe further about the river system of this particular realm. So we have Amazon River, Orinoco River, Magdalene, then you have Parana River, Tocantins, you have San Francisco, Paraguay and Uruguay Rivers. If you observe the biggest one, the biggest catchment area is of this particular Amazon Basin with its tributaries. Then in the north, you have Orinoco and Magdalena and then Paraguay, Parana and Uruguay River, which is falling down in to Atlantic Ocean. These are the major river systems of this particular realm. Now, deserts of South America. Very important that it is a mountain country as well and has an adjoining desert as well. And of course, we have learned that in climatology about the windward and leeward systems across the mountain. So if this is the mountain chain, what happens? If the winds are coming from this side, it obstructs here. So this is the leeward side, the rain shadow. And here you have Atacama Desert. And just opposite happens at around 40 degree latitude. What happens here? The prevailing wind is from this side and this is where you have the biggest Patagonia desert as it is a rain shadow area. So rain does not happen in the other side of the mountain. So this kind of structure is visible. So it has a lot of desertic conditions from north to south as well. So you see Patagonia desert, then you have the La Guaira desert, then you have Atacama desert, Sechura desert, Monte desert. If you observe here in this particular map, all the deserts are listed out here. Now if you observe furthermore about the people. So physiography and people are the two components of geography and regional geography that we are discussing. So if you talk about people, how this continent was peopled, the peopling of places that we say. So remember the people, the indigenous people as we know, come to the Incas, right? So Inca civilization was the major civilization in this particular area. And remember these societies were founded in the coastal valleys, on river basins, on plateaus and also on the mountain locales, mountain top. Right. So these high altitude valleys, if you observe these high altitude valleys, they are called alti planos. So altiplanation is the process that is also important here. So altiplanos they are called, which are having fertile soils, reliable water supplies, building materials where the old construction happened. So if you observe carefully the Inca state where these altiplanos are very famous, high altitude regions of human habitation in the city of Cusco, if you observe carefully. So what is the site of? This is the old remnant of the Inca civilization, very famously known by the name of Machu Picchu. It is one of the wonders of the world that we say, right? So it's the capital of Inca civilization and it's also called city of Incas. Right now, if you observe further, the Incas were the people who were expert in certain domains like stone structures, right? So machinery work was very famous out there. Efficient administrators, they were there, successful farmers, herders, skilled manufacturers. And also they were physicians and experimented with even brain surgery as per records, right? So if you observe further, the city of Cusco, this particular city is the base and on the mountains, you'll find the altiplanos where you'll find the Machu Picchu. So they are declared as World Heritage Site by UNESCO, right? So that's why it is famous. Now if you observe further about the population geography of this particular region. So if you observe carefully, the population is sparse inside the continent, right? But heavily populated on the coastal belts. It means clearly if you observe that coastal belts are more developed, they have more agriculture and all livability. And interior is not that livable. So you have sporadic growth of population in the interior. It is sparsely populated in the interiors. So carefully, if you observe in this particular map also, the dominant ethnic groups of South America. So if observe the green color is African. So the African who moved here from Africa 
right during the colonialism are settled on northern and northeastern portions then if you observe mestizos so they are in this particular valley area or basin of amazon if you observe in the brazil and then if you observe european so european settlers are there more into the particular peninsular belt that is of argentina and uruguay then you have the indigenous population and indigenous population is nearby these peru ecuador indian belt and also in between these amazon rainforests the tribals the indigenous communities and also if you observe carefully these indigenous people are available till down south they are settled till this particular point which is also called a region so how did they settle there through the discovery or you can say invention of fire so that's why they also call it land of fire the southern tip out here now most of the times if you observe south american continent is famously in news for many critical reasons for example the geography of cocaine if you observe right so of all the cocaine that enters united states and other parts of the world colombia peru and bolivia three major countries are the major producers and they earn hefty amount of dollars and employs tens of thousands of workers in this particular industry so if you observe in colombia this is the patch if you observe for the coca plant from where the cocaine is derived and look into the Bolivia. So Peru, Colombia and Bolivia are the major states of cocaine production. To understand it more better, look here. The first of these three stages of cocaine production involves the extraction of the coca paste from the coca plant and then raw material processing and then actually packaging it and supplying it. And then if you observe further, the main zone of coca cultivation is the eastern slope of Andes adjacent tropical lowlands of Bolivia, Peru and Colombia. Colombia, this particular zone if you observe carefully is in the picture of the cocaine centers of South America. Now let's go to the regional geography again and look into that how can this be studied through regional analysis. So to divide this entire continental realm into several regions, the first one is the Caribbean North and Caribbean North is this particular area, right? So first we discuss this in Caribbean North, then there is Andean West. If you observe this particular location is the Andean West. Then further, if you observe is the Southern Cone. So this area in green is the Southern Cone. And then you have the biggest one that is the Brazil. So Brazil independently is one itself, a region in which you have the entire Amazon basin and the Brazilian plateau constituting it. So let's one by one understand from the Brazil from the biggest regional dimension we start so brazil is the giant of south america if you observe carefully and remember the most important river system is amazon river system and brasilia is the capital out here near the brazilian highlands it is endowed with several minerals because of the formation, the geological formation, the Plateau region that we know. So right from bauxite, copper, gold, iron, manganese, nickel, tin. Now if you observe the Amazon basin specifically, because this is one of the most significant geographical feature of this continent. So almost this western part of the Colombia to this Guiana, this is the entire catchment area of the Amazon basin. And if you carefully observe in this map, there are many rainforest areas which are in green if you observe amazon river and also famously this area is known by the name of lungs of our planet amazon rainforest and then we have the indigenous groups of people in the purple patches in these so many old tribes are living there and then comes the constructive parts which is now being constructed so what are these in operation and under construction these are hydroelectric dams and which are causing significant environmental problems of late that has been in news so if you observe some tribes like yanomami people their homeland is being now encroached from outside that is under the question in search of the gold so this area has a lot of gold placer gold deposits and because of which there is intrusion into Amazonia now. So now let's go to the next realm that is the Caribbean North, which is close to the Caribbean Sea. So Lesser Antilles and this particular location is interconnected from here. So this particular location is what you observe the Caribbean North. Now Caribbean North, if you observe, has more population on the coastal cities, coastal belts, and it is also linked to the North America through this isthmus of Panama. So if you observe carefully, the major country in the Caribbean North is Colombia with capital Bogota 
and it also has Andes mountain system and this Magdalena river system which is flowing through it and apart from this the people who are inhabiting is Muisca then you have Kimbaya and Tairona so these are the old people who are settled here the indigenous people in Colombia and further if you observe the geography of Colombia is characterized by six main and natural regions so you can divide Colombia itself into six regions if you observe carefully Andes mountain range Pacific coastal belt this particular coastal belt if you observe then we have Caribbean coastal region so this is the Caribbean coastal region then Llanos plains which are in the plain areas then Amazon rainforest region insular areas right so these are the constituents of six major physical divisions or ecological zones of Colombia and apart from this Colombia is the country with planet's highest biodiversity now it's a mega diverse region tropical equatorial rainforest and a lot of species richness is there so observe 10% of species of earth live in Colombia now if you observe further the next country in this zone is Venezuela and Venezuela is geologically part of the mainland of South America and it is connected from the North America through the Panama so Koppen's climatic classification if you observe carefully this blue is AF the tropical rainforest that dominates this particular landscape so mostly tropical rainforest and tropical monsoon type forests are available and some patches are also the hot deserts especially in the coastal zones if you observe these hot desert areas so to understand furthermore Venezuela lies in neotropical realm if you observe according to the phytogeographic and zoogeographic classification so neotropical realm is very common here and it means that this area is again part of the 17 mega diverse regions of the world apart from this if you want to observe carefully the peaks which lie here in the central mountains the Bolivar peak the snow cladded mountain is also available then what you observe is the Llanos plain areas with grasslands so this is available and apart from this what you find in contrast is also the desert and this is Midano the Koro National Park so this is desert national park on the coastal areas across the leeward side of Andes so if you observe this is a mega diverse physiographically and also biogeographically apart from this the three Guianas that you observe the Guyana here then you have Suriname here and then you have French Guiana here so these three countries are very important in this Caribbean North which are connected to this Atlantic Ocean the Caribbean Sea and very importantly it's the part of Latin America that we say right so the first is legacy of British colonialism the Guiana if you observe with capital as Georgetown then there is Dutch influence in this particular Suriname and then what you have is the dependency of France it's called French Guiana Christopher Columbus first spotted the coast of Guianas in 1498 and called it Wild West as well then another explorer called Walter Raleigh began the exploration of the Guianas in search of gold and the famous city of gold called El Dorado right so this is where the search was done this particular region was where the search for gold was done apart from this there is one waterfall which is very famous there and it falls in Venezuela but part of the Guiana Highlands we know by the name of Angel Falls the highest waterfall right and now the Andean West the most famous geomorphological feature on earth right it's Andes mountain range so here right from Colombia Ecuador Peru to Chile this extension this is where we say Andean West. So in this we'll be talking about Peru, Ecuador, Bolivia. And remember, Peru especially is known for this Humboldt current, Peruvian current, and a place where El Nino and La Nina is associated in climatology, isn't it? So if you observe Peru here, so this is Ecuador and here is the northern boundary of Peru. This is the particular coastline. And here is Lima, the capital city. Andes mountains cover 40% of the Peru. Next important thing here is, the narrow rocky coastline where it extends to the Chile, right? So this entire area is famous for world tourism and geotourism especially in the world so this particular is the Amazonia area of Peru as well which is important and remember 75% of the territory of Peru is covered through the flow of Amazon and its tributaries and Peru is drained by many other river so if you observe Lake Titicaca and the adjoining areas where people live and in the old traditional ways the indigenous ways right so this Lake Titicaca where you observe is the seat of 
traditions and cultures for Peru and Bolivia as well. Now if you observe, Peru is the world's sixth largest producer of gold, price of which is soaring and gold belt is also extending in the Peruvian Andes. So this particular gold is where the world is now looking towards Peruvian gold and a lot of extension of these gold mines are happening in Peru and because of which there is also a threat to indigenous population and also biodiversity and environment which is commonly in news. Now if you observe, Peru's main exports would be copper, gold, zinc, textiles, fish industry is the biggest industry out here. Now go to the Ecuador. Famously where Equator passes through the name gets Ecuador and Ecuador very country in which the central region is the Andean mountain and divides the country into east and west right. So if you observe some important points out there in Ecuador, Ecuador Pacific coastal zone consists of belt of hills interrupted by lowlands this particular zone if you observe and Guayaquil is the major commercial center if you observe in this Gulf of Guayaquil where it is situated and it holds all the trade and other things. Now seafood is the speciality of this country and bananas, cocoa, cattle raising and coffee is the mainstay of economy. Now let's go further and look into Ecuador from a physical perspective. So this is you see Andes mountains then you have the volcanoes out here in this particular area and it is known for certain volcanoes if you remember. Chimborazo is the highest one and Cotopaxi. These two are the major ones. So 6310 meters the highest volcanic peak out here. Right, so this is important. Now let's go to Bolivia, the Bolivian Intermountain Plateau, Bolivian Plateau region, of which this area, if you observe, this western, southwestern is the Altiplano area of Bolivia, Intermountain Altiplanos Basin. And now further, if you observe that it is a landlocked country. So because of this landlocked situation, it has a lot of disadvantages in location, right? So if you observe, there are no direct access to ports and transportation. And so it is dependent on the adjoining countries for the help in terms of all these international trades and others. Now further, let's go to the Paraguay. So Paraguay is the adjoining of Bolivia out here. The Parana River system is out here, right? Parana River is this river right then you have further Pilcomayo river out here and then you have a Paraguay river highest peak if you observe is here Cerro Pero and then further you have the southern cone which is majorly the and Argentina region if you observe right and major of this Argentina is a Spanish speaking word the plain area and the Pampas region that you observe Buenos Aires is the capital city here right and world's widest street is very famous out here and another classic South American primate city is Buenos Aires. So these are certain things which are important out here. Now go to the Chile. So if you observe this long country long coastline country Chile extends from Peru to the down south Feridel Fugo and let's divide it and study in parts. So this is the northern part of Chile which is north Chile and observe the Atacama desert is out here so it's all a desert country. Then we have the middle part and in the middle part, you will find a lot of settlements like San Diego, other important centers, more commercial, more livable. And then you have the down south, which is broken islands and the coastal mountain region, which is southern Chile. And it is inhabited by the old people, the indigenous people majorly. So this is the division of Chile from north to south. And further, there is important aspect that we need to look into is a concept called lithium triangle. So lithium is found in this Plateau area, Intermountain Plateau and River Basin of Argentina, Bolivia and Chile mountain region. So this area is famously known for the lithium triangle and it's of worth because now we are looking into the future energy based on electricity and lithium is very important for electric vehicles and at last we have one more island that is Falkland Island if you observe this particular area and it is under the jurisdiction of United Kingdom right so Falkland consists of continental crust fragments resulting in breakup of Gondwana and from there it developed that's very important and its adjoining is the Patagonia desert and some of the important bay areas are King George Bay then you have Bay of Harbors then you have Berkeley Sound. So now when we have covered in details the South American region and its various aspects in today's session in the sessions to come we'll be talking more on other parts of the world. So stay tuned, stay safe, keep watching and learning, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and also please share the videos with others as well.